island was set at the opposite end of the world from Britain, but like her in size and fertility, are the homes of two races, Maori and British. Today, the Maoris are armed to defend their country and round the campfires sing the songs of their ancestors. Back in the 13th century, the Maori people discovered New Zealand. To these wide bays and shelving beaches came the Polynesian sea rovers sailing their big double canoes. In traversing the countless sea leagues from Hawaii, their last known starting point, they showed amazing skill in navigation. They came to make their homes in the twin islands they named Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud. It was only a century ago that the British first came here with the intention of settling. They were men of courage and imagination, island farmers and skilled English workmen and small landowners anxious to start a new society away from the hard conditions of Britain in the hungry 1840s. Our farmers today inherit the traditions of those first settlers. They are men and women of independent thought like their grandfathers who had come to colonize in a new way according to the theories of a certain Gibbon Wakefield. He argued that people must be encouraged to work their land rather than own it, and insisted that the new colony must be self-governing and independent. buy land amicably from the Maoris, whom they found established there. But there were quarrels between our two races, and a war in which the Maoris fought with incredible chivalry. That was all over, 70 years ago now, and we saw then that the land was large enough and rich enough to support both races living side by side. We are very proud of our unity, for although we are two races, we have one country which we share in common. We are taught in the same schools, and when we are grown up, we work in the fields and the factories together. In Parliament, both Maori and white men serve, and Maoris often obtain cabinet rank. In the Rotorua district now, with the men away in the army, Maori girls and white girls, Pākehās as the Maoris call them, are growing vegetables. These are sweet potatoes. The warmth of the earth here acts as a hothouse and forces the plants. For the nature of these islands is strange and varied. Here, geysers shoot from the steaming earth, and you can wash yourself and your clothes in an unceasing supply of natural hot water. As we built our cities, we never forgot that towns and factories are run by human beings. Our people descend from the Chartists and trade union martyrs who fought for social security in England. As soon as they landed here, they insisted on an eight-hour day. That was a revolutionary idea in 19th century Europe, but in progressive laws, we have often led other countries. And since 1936, Workers have been guaranteed a complete social security scheme. That is a heritage we are determined to protect, and volunteers were not wanting for the struggle against fascism, which we had started years earlier at Geneva. Of our men of military age, almost two-thirds volunteered for service, and 95,000 went overseas. Block farmers also do their share of duty with a home guard. They patrol lonely beaches, cross fast and deep rivers, 
living in the saddle by day and sleeping by their horses at night. It is arduous work after long days on the farm. to guard in addition to their homes and land. Factories and hydroelectric stations, like this one, where the waters of the Southern Alps, fed by melting glaciers, are harnessed to provide natural power. Lonely outposts are keeping watch day and night over the long coastlines of our two islands, with their hardly known bays and flat, deserted beaches. productive strength of our interior is being turned over to war needs. We are cutting our timber, hard beech and fir trees for air force and army needs. On the Canterbury Plains, a rich wheat crop yields as much as 60 bushels an acre. New Zealand grass, in peacetime the basis of some of your finest lawns and pastures, is now used for aeroplane landing grounds. We breed grasses as the Scotch breed cattle. Our wool, lamb, butter and cheese depend on it. So we have a department of industrial and scientific research started 16 years ago. At one experimental station, the grass flowers are pollinated by hand. To prevent interpollination, the heads are wrapped up in cellophane. But in some cases, a bumblebee is used to pollinate the seed. First, it is washed as carefully as is a surgeon before he performs an operation. Then it is set amongst the clover, where its legs carry the pollen from flower to flower as it sips up the honey. request of the British government, who sent us the seed, we started to grow linen flax, and we have a large acreage turned over to its cultivation. We have built up a flax industry which has proved a great success, and now 17 factories are processing the crop, which is used for the fabrics of aeroplane wings and bomber fuselage. raising sheep for your food, clothes and blankets, making butter and cheese in the dairy factory. Housewives all over the empire know New Zealand butter. Much of it at present is going to feed American troops in the Pacific under a reciprocal lend-lease agreement. for our factories comes mostly from deep underground. But one mine is at the top of the South Island mountain. We also mine gold, iron ore, limestone and many other minerals. And we mine chrome, which hardens the metal in shell. To defend their freedom and our tradition of good labor conditions, the workers in our factories were ready to turn them over to the needs of total war. Old Lee Enfield rifle barrels are cut up to make new Sten guns. Each bomb we send out is given an extra polish before it falls on the Japanese invaders in New Guinea. 
Our heavy industry is building more locomotives than ever before, essential for supply lines in a mechanized war. And our factories are turning out Bren gun carriers in large numbers for the Eastern Theater of War, in addition to other munitions. On the war front, our wounded returned to us. They fought with Wavell in Egypt. They fought in Greece and Crete and during the long African campaign. They held the Nazis at Mercer Marshall. Under General Freiburg, D.C., they formed the Thunderbolts of the 10th Army Corps, which turned Rommel's line at El Alamein and helped to start the rout of the Germans in Africa. We were able to keep up this fight at the same time as we stood against the Japanese threat to our own shores on the Pacific, and while our soldiers garrisoned many of the Pacific Islands and our aeroplanes fought over Malay. Our sailors helped to man the Achilles and became heroes of the River Plate. democracy has survived its struggle for existence, we hope it may look here and 